This video is a tutorial sheet. So students are reminded how tutorial sheets work. The idea is that you can use these to test your own understanding. So what you should do is pause the video and try the questions by yourself. Only look at the solutions once you've made a proper attempt, otherwise you won't know whether you can do it by yourself. Now you're reminded the emphasis here is on sketching, not plotting. If you really need an accurate plot, please use a computer. And you're also reminded, though we've not done it here, that you can easily generate your own tutorial examples and use a computer to test your solutions. Once students are competent in sketching, then this video series is going to start moving more onto feedback loop analysis and design. First question then, sketch the Nyquist diagrams for the following transfer functions. And I'd recommend you check your answers with MATLAB or otherwise, then we won't do that here. So what I'm going to do is do one system at a time, but now is a good time for you to pause this video and have a go at these before you look at our solutions. As ever, we will start the answers by doing some simple sketches. We'll look at the uh, bowed gain and the bowed phase. Now this system has got a single corner frequency at 5. It's got an integrator. So if I do the gain plot, it will go down and then it will go down. And I can actually work out the position of the asymptotes by inspection. It's going to be 4 over 25. Clearly the actual bow plot will be smaller than that by a factor of root 2. What about the phase? Well, because we've got an integrator, the phase will start at minus 90 and finish at minus 180. So we're going to have a phase plot that looks somewhat like that. Next then, let's imagine what the Nyquist diagram is going to look like. Now we've got enough information in here to do a good Nyquist plot. We can see where does the phase start. It starts at minus 90. We can see that we're always in quadrant 3 and that we approach the origin in the minus 180 degree direction. We also have a point at minus 135 degrees, and I can sketch that out with that dotted line there, we can see that the magnitude is going to be 4 over 25 root 2, which is actually quite small. So, for example, if I was to mark minus 1 over there, then what we can see is we're going to be passing through a point somewhere like that. We're going to be going pretty close to the origin. So if I now do my sketch, starting from minus 90, trying to get through that point, coming in, in the correct direction, we're going to have something like that. Next example, h equals 10, s plus 2 over s plus 5, all squared. So again, I'm going to start with my Bode diagrams, just so we can see what's going on. And here we've got corner frequency at 2 and a double corner frequency at 5. So the gain it's going to be flat up to 2 and if we substitute in omega equals 0 you'll see you get 20 over 25 that's where it starts we're then going to go up a slope 20 decibels per decade and then down a slope 20 decibels per decade so there's my game plot now it's not immediately obvious what this plot's going to do it's going to be something like that what about the phase well clearly We've got a starting phase of 0, we've got an asymptote that goes up to 90, and we're going to go down to minus 90. So if I plot this, the asymptotes are going to do something like that. That's the phase asymptotes. And if we actually plot the phase, I'm not going to be able to be overly precise at this point. It's going to be something like this. Now, we might be asking, OK, questions like, Where's the initial quadrant? We've got two poles at minus 5 and one zero at minus 2. And you might be asking, does this s plus 2 dominate over the two s plus 5s? We suspect it does, but we're not quite sure. And so what we're interested in is whether or not 
in this part of the diagram, are we indeed in quadrant one or are we in quadrant four? Now the way to resolve this, or the way I'm going to use it, is I'm simply going to calculate the phase at a frequency omega equals one. So if I substitute in and calculate the phase, what you will get is tan to the minus one of one over two, minus two, tan to the minus one of one over five, and that gives me 15 degrees. So you can see I am indeed in quadrant one at low frequencies. <laughs> okay, so having got that, I can now do my Nyquist diagram. So, we start at a position of 0.8, and what we've noticed is that for low frequencies, the gain seems to be going up, the phase is going up, and then later on, it reverses. So what we expect is we're going into quadrant one, and then we're going to come round, and we come back into the origin along the minus 90 degree direction. So we're going to have a diagram something like that. Next one then, 2s plus 10 over s, s plus 1, s plus 4. So as ever, we'll start by doing some crude bowed sketches. We'll put in our poles and zeros, so we've got a 1, a 4, and a 10. Okay. Now, if I do the gain plot, because there's an integrator, I find I have a slope down, steeper down, steeper down, and like that. So again, that's not much of a sketch, really. The key thing is the gain is always going down. What about the phase? Well, I can start with a minus 90, because there's an integrator. Let's mark minus 180 and minus 270. And what you'll see is we go through the first pole, asymptote down to minus 180, second pole, asymptote down to minus 270, and then back up. So my phase is going to do something like this, probably. Now I need to check, or probably need to check at some point just to be sure, but clearly we're going to start in quadrant three, and the question we've got is do we fall in to quadrant two. Now I can be fairly confident that we do here because the one and the four are quite well separated from the ten. But if you're not sure, you can always calculate the phase at a frequency somewhere like that, say omega equals seven or eight, um, and then you'll be able to check it. Now, what else can I do before I complete my sketch? Well, if I were to ignore that s plus ten, and I'm being very simple here, but this is the sort of trick that you can do um, if you're doing things on pen and paper. If I say that 10's quite a lot bigger than the 1 and 4, so at low frequencies I'm sort of going to ignore it, then you could make an argument that at the geometric mean of those two frequencies, which is 2, then you would expect the phase to be close to minus 180 degrees. So omega equals 2, you expect the phase to be close to minus 180 degrees. Now we can actually check this and see whether we're right. So what we get is tan to the minus 1 of 2, so I minus tan to the mi minus tan to the minus 1 of a half, minus 90, plus tan to the minus 1 of 1 over 5, and if you put that in your calculator, you see you get minus 168 degrees. So it is indeed pretty close to minus 180. Now, if I calculate the gain at that point, all right, which I'm not going to do uh, the fine details here, but you can work it out yourself, you'll find the modulus of g of j2 is approximately 1. Okay, so I've now got a point on which to hang my plot. So now if I do my Nyquist diagram, you'll see how I'm able to use this. So I'll mark the minus one point, there it is, and if I was to do a unit circle, which is a, a radius of one, you'll notice I've said where the gain of the system is one, I had a phase of minus 168. So my plot must be going through a point somewhere like that. 
I know that it approaches the origin from quadrant 2 in the minus 180 degree direction and I know it starts with a phase of minus 90 towards infinity so I'm going to end up with a plot oops started the line too low I'm going to end up with a plot that does something like this so there's my Nyquist diagram for this example next one then p equals 3 of s minus 1 s plus 6 so before I start this one because it's got a right half plane pole I'm going to first write the phase and make sure I don't make any silly mistakes so the argument of p is given by minus 10 to the minus 1 of omega over 6 minus 180 minus 10 to the minus 1 of omega or that's minus 180 minus 10 to the minus 1 omega over 6 plus 10 to the minus 1 of omega so now when I do my bode sketches and I'm going to squeeze them in a bit smaller but that should should not matter too much I've got corner frequencies at 1 and 6 now in terms of the game plot it's fairly clear you get this monotonic decrease we don't need to worry too much about that but in terms of the phase plot what can you see you can see I've got a plus 10 to the minus 1 of omega and a minus 10 to the minus 1 omega over 6 and we're starting at minus 180 so I've got a minus 180 and a minus 90 because I'm going through the one first so my phase asymptotes will look like that so if I do the phase what will you see it starts at minus 180 goes up and then comes down again all right and which quadrant are we in there well we're in quadrant 3 the whole time in quadrant 3 now where do we start what's the initial gain well the initial gain over here you can 3 over minus 6 is minus a half obviously the gain is a half but I've put the actual value in to make sure we don't make a silly mistake so the plot is going to start from here minus 0.5 the gain is monotonic decrease we're always going towards the origin the phase initially goes anti-clockwise and then goes clockwise so it goes towards minus 90 and then comes back to minus 180 so we're going to get a plot that does something like this okay next example then which you'll see the numbers were taken out of a textbook by Wilkie and co-authors so we've got a tanker um, that's a, a C tanker and it's got a model given here G equals 0.0005 s plus 0.02 over 0.008 minus s 0.06 plus s and we've given this just so that you've got some numbers which are a bit more cumbersome to try with and what we want you to do is sketch the Nyquist plot by first sketching the Bode asymptotes now again what you need to do is pause here before you move to the solution here's the solution then so again you'll notice this has got a right half plane pole so what I'm going to do before I start is write out the phase fairly carefully so the phase of G is going to be given by 10 to the minus 1 omega over 0.02 minus 10 to the minus 1 of omega over 0.06 and then plus 10 to the minus 1 of omega over 0.008 now I could do the steady state gain um, in detail but I'm just going to write it out for you um, because you, the number crunching is a bit messy you get 1 over 48 if you just uh, get rid of those s's and see what's left so what do we get if we do our bode sketches well first of all let's mark our poles and zeros we had a 0.008 a 0.02 and a 0.06 so you'll see 0.008 is a pole 0.02 is a zero 0.06 is a pole so what you'll find is you go along the slope goes down you go flat 
the slope goes down. So what you'll see in terms of the gain, you're expecting a monotonic decrease in gain starting at 1 over 48. If you look at the phase, and you'll see the phase argument at the top, what you'll notice is the initial phase is 0. So let's put a 0 there. You'll notice there's a plus term here. Perhaps if I can use red, there's a plus term for the first uh, one corner frequency, a plus term for this corner frequency, and a minus term for this corner frequency. So the plus terms or the plus corner frequencies come first, so I'm likely to need 90 and 180, and it means my asymptotes are going to do something like this. And then if I sketch the phase, it's likely to do something like this. Now again, the argument I'm using is because 0 0.06 is three times as big as 0 0.02, I'm pretty confident that we're going to go into quadrant two. Again, you can check it if you really want to, but I'm not going to do that here. So what you'll notice is the plot starts in quadrant one and finishes in quadrant two and it approaches the origin in the plus 90 degree direction. So if I do my Nyquist diagram, we start from a value 1 over 48. We see initially we're going in an anti-clockwise direction, um, but we're always getting closer to the origin. We go into quadrant 2 and then we come back, something like that. I don't think I've done that particularly well. Um, Something like that probably is slightly better. Um, we need to try and make sure that the gain is always reducing as well as getting the phase characteristic correct. Now this question is for you to do by yourself. So I'll just leave it up for 10 seconds so you can pause the video and read it. And that's the end.